Welcome to that bridge. I'm there today. Let's get some harvesting done. Let's Before get we get started, please remember to subscribe. So today we're going to be harvesting a load of different things. Um, I wasn't talking in this video because every single plot that was around me had someone on it. Um, so I was just like quietly respecting their space because lots of people come down the allotment to kind of like have peace and quiet. Um, so today I'm going to be um, harvesting things like cucumbers. I'm actually getting all the cucumbers that I can off of these plants because uh, we've had quite a few pest problems and I don't want to lose any more cucumbers to pests. Um, and I've got the squash here. This is custard squash. I don't know why it's called custard squash, but it is a white squash. Um, and I'm actually making this into flour uh, because we have so many squashes that we can't actually keep up on them. But um, some of you might already know I have, um, I don't really eat carbs um, due to medical problems. So um, it's really handy for me to have like a low cost, um, no carb sort of flour. Um, if you are able to eat carbs, I would recommend just eating cheap flour because <laughs> it's so much more cheaper. Um, so that's what I'm using them for. I'm also going um, through here and getting rid of these leaves with the powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is a really big issue because everyone's using overhead waterers, myself included. Uh, but because we're so close to each other, when somebody else is watering their plants, they water your plants as well. So the um, leaves are actually continuously getting um, very moist and not drying out correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw those over onto the potatoes to use them as a mulch because potatoes aren't actually um, impacted by powdery mildew. And during the process of these leaves breaking down, the powdery mildew is actually destroyed and will not be passed on. And as you can see here, I'm just going to be keeping this particular plant until that pumpkin actually ripens because Basically, this has one pumpkin on it. It is a very important um, Halloween pumpkin for Jasmine, so it is very important that we get it to a very good size. So this squash is another patty pan. It's called Shooting Star. It produces these patty pan shaped um, yellow patty pans, <laughs> um, which I find very tasty and really nice. You can use them just like a courgette. I'm actually making these into flour lately. I wonder how that's gonna turn out. So this variety here is a yellow Roma. Um, it's really great for making sauces and things like that. It is a determinant, which means that basically it sets out a given amount of tomatoes and then it stops making any more flowers. So as soon as it's done, it's done. This type of tomato is really good for making sauces as it is um, got quite a low water content. It is also high acidity and tends to have a lot of sugars in it. This cherry tomato here is called sun, Sunburst. Um, it is a um, fast yielding tomato which produces a lot of fruit. This thing is prolific. Look, I've, I've harvest every two days and yet they're falling onto the floor um, it produces a lot of fruit so these tomatoes i've just put in come from a tomato that my friend gave me this is tumbling tom by the way red um and they are awesome they are really really great i don't know what they are if you know what tomato that is that brown one please let me know because i want to grow a million of them they are amazing um, Tom and Tom is also good. Spiders absolutely love it. Um, so I have to say I'm a bit less of a fan of it. My peppers are doing amazing. Um, they are really got loads and loads of crop on there. Sorry, Bailey did turn over and wanted to let you know that he's not impressed with me. This is Tagliatelle. I am taking them a bit earlier. I do ripen them on the side. Technically speaking, this does actually count as them being fine ripened this one here is tumbling tiger it is also a determinant i tell you this i can't describe to you how many spiders are in this thing um but it means that they are nice it's actually a really fantastic tomato i would grow this again it's really tasty and incredibly beautiful to look at so i would grow that one again um as you can see i have quite a lot of tomatoes that take a little while to ripen like these beauties i believe these are indigo cherries 
oh my goodness they are so pretty um, I'm very excited about when they will be uh, ripening as they are incredibly beautiful and um, they go red at the bottom that's how you can tell that's why I'm like looking sort of upside down there so these are green zebra my favorite tomato as you can see here I'm actually giving them a little bit of a squish because um, as you probably know green zebra does not change color it kind of goes a very 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 lighter shade of yellow giving it a squish is the best way to determine so this is one. another example of the um, cherry tomato that my friend gave me um, she doesn't know the name of it either but it is amazing it is like my favorite cherry tomato at the moment um, it's so incredibly sweet yes it does look weird I'll give you that it isn't the nicest color um, it doesn't really get any riper than that that is it <laughs> like green on top it's amazing um, this one's called golden nugget it's really incredibly sweet thin skinned um, very very yellow very very sweet it's nice um, it is one of my determinant uh, variety mm. Mm. oh look that is the uh, what's it called potato squash absolutely tons of flowers in there so that's a patty pan as well have we got any yep this is um sunstroke These are winter squashes, so yeah, I don't actually get these until the winter, obviously, since now. But look, hoo, hoo, hoo. it's changing colour, it's looking fantastic. Oh, look at that. They're all looking really good. But once again, we're waiting for this to dry up, and we're waiting for, so it will look like this when it's dried up, and waiting for this to go brown, and then you have to use perisacatores to cut it, it's very hard have a little look here look he's absolutely thriving mint over there so looking great but they're even growing in the path these things are prolific there's like an absolute forest here so let's have a look to see if we've got any these are lemon cukes oh looking great these are my favorite cucumbers they are just prolific i will be definitely growing these again ah oh, you see lack of pollination there it's not good it's getting very hot it's getting very stressful with these there we go some younger ones here Imagine if they turned into like a harder squash and they kept middle of the winter, that'd be awesome. This is another lemon squash. There's lots of babies there, nothing quite ready. You can see here there was a um, slug problem, so I put down a slug trap and look, loads of cucumbers again. It's amazing how one little thing changes so much in the garden setting. That so, one. This one. <laughs> got this one. I've got to continue filling up them beer traps. Look at that cucumber coming. You can't believe how happy I am once I figured out what was eating all my cucumbers. Look, another cucumber there. Oh my goodness, these things are prolific. And it's funny, as soon as you work out what's the matter with the plant you were so rewarded by a massive harvest 
so you've got to pay attention to your plants and listen to what they're saying because if you don't you don't get no cucumbers jesus look ah oh, that's why they've slowed down there's two absolutely huge cucumbers on there look at them gone from zero cucumbers to loads of cucumbers there we go nice Beans are still doing really fantastic. These beans, oh no, look. Oh, dang. Look at this. Something probably. So this needs a walk quite desperately. I'm gonna go do that. Look, sit in these squashes. So as soon as you get the old ones off, they will set fruit. So don't throw away your squashes yet because they will set fruit as soon as the old ones. They, all they want to do is get babies for next year. So if you keep taking the fruit, they'll keep producing that eggplant. Remember, we are in the UK. So eggplant is particularly difficult to grow. And look at the size of that. Look at the size. Look absolutely covered. Fantastic. So this is a squash called Shooting Star, it is really nice, it's a slower producer than the other one um, and it's given me a zucchini today and oh, they're going to be going into my harvest in You know how they have them kangaroo aprons? <laughs> I, think it's, I stretch all my tops. 